Today I'm going to be talking about period poverty and why it's an important issue for the church. So let's start with the big question. What is period poverty? Period poverty is the lack of access to sanitary products, menstrual hygiene education, toilets, hand washing facilities and or waste management. It affects people who menstruate all over the world. The cultural shame attached to menstruation and a shortage of resources stop people from going to school and working every day. Here are some statistics from freeperiods.org. One in ten girls can't afford to buy menstrual products in the UK. Over 137,700 children in the UK have missed school because of period poverty. Menstrual products cost around £13 every month, which adds up to a massive £18,000 during a woman's lifetime. A survey of more than a 1,000 girls found that nearly half were embarrassed by their period, and many were afraid to ask for help because of the stigma. Here's a graph from Plan International UK. I'm not going to read it out to you, so if you'd like to pause the video now to read the graph for yourself. And another graph here just showing the impact of the taboo and stigma surrounding periods. Again, if you'd like to pause the video and read the information, please do that now. So you might now be asking, why is this an important issue for the church? And the evidence is right there in the Bible. In Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34, it says, And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realised that the power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. You might think it's perhaps a bit tenuous to link this Bible story with period poverty, but there are definitely some signs within the text. The woman in the story thinks, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Now that could be because she's in a massive crowd and she can't get Jesus' attention. But it could also be because she's embarrassed and she doesn't feel able to ask because of the taboo or stigma surrounding woman's bleeding. Jesus knows that someone has touched his clothes and eventually this poor woman has to admit in front of the whole crowd that it was her. But Jesus isn't angry and he doesn't embarrass her further. He says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And that says to me as a Christian that it's my duty to help free others from the suffering of period poverty. So what can we do to help? There are many things we can do to help alleviate period poverty. The first is donating sanitary products to your local food bank. Most food banks in the UK will also accept pads or tampons and can distribute them to those most in need. There are also a number of period poverty charities in the UK and further afield that work to reduce period poverty. I myself am an ambassador for Freedom for Girls who are a Leeds-based period poverty charity and who are always willing to accept donations of either money or sanitary products. But the most important thing we can do, and the thing that doesn't cost anything, is to raise awareness and decrease the stigma. The more conversations you have about periods, the less embarrassing they become. 
Educating ourselves and others is really important and we start by having these difficult conversations. I also wanted to share what I personally have been doing to fight period poverty. Throughout lockdown, I've been making reusable sanitary towels using material I had lying around the house. I used old bed sheets, pillowcases, towels and an old shower curtain that would otherwise have been thrown away. I send the completer pads to Freedom for Girls who distribute them to people in need. So if you're a crafty person and fancy turning your hand to this, I have lots of resources and instructions that I can give to you. And it's my hope that when this whole lockdown situation is over, maybe we can set up some sewing groups within the circuit and get people making these reusable sanitary towels. So a final prayer. Let's pray. Lord, you have always helped those whom society deemed not worth helping. Give us the courage to follow your example and to be champions of the needy and marginalised. Forgive us when we've been blind to someone in need. Help us to go forward with the knowledge that we're forgiven and the strength to make a difference. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.